Hi everyone, I'm back and I decided today I am mostly just going to play. I'm not really trying to do anything. I have absolutely nothing uh, pre-planned for any shape that I want to make. And I am going to try to um, do this video talking while I'm working some. I'm hoping that you can hear me over the hair dryer. I apologize, it is a little bit loud. The cool setting on this one is kind of a high cool setting. I'll try to remember to speak a little bit louder when I've got the hair dryer running. I picked out today, let's see, um, Pitch Black, Mermaid, and Purple Twilight from Ranger, just because these are three colors that I really enjoy working with, and I like the way they look together. All right, I, uh, as if any of you have watched my last couple of videos, as you all have figured out, I'm pretty hard on myself a lot of times when it comes to, um, it, well, pretty much anything, but especially my artwork. I, I, other people can look at things and go, wow, you know, that's amazing. It's beautiful. And I'm going, are you joking? I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell that at a yard sale. <laughs> so I, and, and I apologize if I was kind of whiny the last couple of videos. I'll try not to do that. Um, I've, I've just had a rough few days. So I'm feeling much better today. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully just the improvement in my mood and the way that I feel physically will, uh, will help a little bit with um, how a painting turns out and the fact that I'm just gonna have fun you know it's I'm doing this one on photo paper if it doesn't turn out I'll throw the trash uh, you know I don't care it's it's not expensive this is why I highly recommend you guys for your practicing and playing around definitely get photo paper this is um, Office Depot brand um, it's glossy I use the back side. Be sure you use the back side. The front side is actually made to absorb ink as it goes through your printer. And so you, you don't want your ink to absorb or it's not going anywhere. Um, I have not used it yet, but Kirkland brand from Costco is supposed to be really good. That's one of a lot of people's favorites. I have some ordered. Hopefully it'll be here by the end of the week this week so I can give it a try. I also have ordered some of the new um, plastic craft paper. I don't even know what craft plastic. I don't want to use the word paper. Um, by the company Graphics. I Some of you that watch other videos may have seen on um, Miriam's Nature. She did a review on the Graphics Opaque White craft plastic which is something new and it's supposed to be really great for alcohol inks she was really impressed with it and really pleased so I have some ordered I'm hoping that it will be here within the next few days and once it is I will definitely do a video for you guys with it so we can check out and see what the difference is between it and Yupo and the um, photo paper speaking of photo paper um, Costco has the Kirkland brand in different sizes. This is just eight and a half by 11 standard, you know, photo paper size. They also have um, 11 by 14 and, oh, let me think, 13 by 19, I believe it is, which would be a, a nice big piece of, <laughs> of paper to do something on, um, which I think I'm going to get some of that too and try it out and see how the bigger ones are because a lot of times it's fun for me to do the big ones where I can really just kind of blow ink all over the place and don't have to worry about getting too close to the edges and losing all of all of my uh, white space in there. Uh, I like keeping negative space in mine. It just, you know, you want your art to be the focal point to me and that white space, the negative space around it, whether it's white or black, whatever you're working on, um, it really, really helps with that in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna get started and I will um, try to let you guys know a little bit of what I'm doing as I go along and hopefully you will be able to hear me as I'm doing it. Well, 
Well, that was just way more black than I intended to put out there. This Ranger Black is one of those that you don't really need more than just two or three drops to start with, and I think I have about 10 now, so let's see how that goes. So notice I'm trying to stay at the outside edge, um, just kind of blowing it all back in right now. If I put it directly over top, see what happens? And that's not something that I particularly like. <laughs> but I did want to show you guys why you don't want to put your hair dryer directly over top of your ink puddle until it is fairly well dry, unless you're just really trying to blow it out a long way. And you really have no control at all of where it goes when you do it like that. Remember to kind of come in from your sides a little bit too. Don't only just come in straight from the this side here and blow it back to the middle. You also want to keep that going on the sides a little bit. And you can see what these little beads that are forming. The water and the alcohol. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we'll do that on occasion and I really don't like that. I had mentioned that on, um, I don't know if it was the last video, some video recently, um, where I'll usually just take a little dab of paper towel. Once the ink itself is mostly dry, if there's still that little bit of water, let me show you. Just take a tiny little corner of paper towel and just you know kind of gently dab it on it and you can kind of absorb that up um, there I left marks there but if you're careful you won't even really leave marks on your paper and if you do um, this early on it's certainly not a problem because it's gonna cover right back over all that anyway Um, one thing that I kept forgetting to mention is, um, for those of you who are just starting out with the UFO, if you are using a heat gun or a hair dryer uh, on, the, on a heat setting, make sure that you use the heavyweight UFO. The, um, even the medium weight UFO will buckle because it is plastic and so you're melting it and it will the medium weight buckles really really badly if it gets too much heat on it the heavyweight will you'll notice if you're working one spot for a long time that it will kind of buckle too but it generally I really don't know why but it generally flattens itself back out as long as you've not just you know sat there with your dryer blowing over it for five minutes to where it is just completely warped. Um, but definitely something you want to keep in mind because you don't want to ruin a, a beautiful painting by forgetting and using a heat setting on Yupo, which is plastic. I'm trying to decide where I want to go with this. Um, kind of working up towards this corner up here. I don't really know what I want to do. 
So we'll just see what happens. You guys can see that um, the pitch black by Ranger is another one of those colors that um, really um, breaks apart, leaves you with a lot of different colors as you're using it. If you actually want a true black in a painting, this is not a good one to use. It's, you get some beautiful effects with this, and I love it. But if I want something that's actually going to stay black as I blow it out, the um, Pinata Mantilla Black is much better for that than this Ranger Pitch Black is. And on on Yupo, the Pitch Black actually stains much worse than it does on the photo paper. That's the same deal as eggplant. When you're working on the Yupo, you get a lot more staining uh, underneath your ink. Some splatters going across my paper. I got a little more alcohol than I had intended on there, and I was not being careful with my dryer. I'll just I'll hold this off to the side and just put just a few drops of alcohol on uh, just a little you know cotton swab and just rub that off of there you don't want to get too much especially if you're anywhere near your ink because you don't want the alcohol to run out onto the paper and um, you know destroy whatever it is you're working on See there? All gone. <laughs> Let's see. I think I'm going to throw in another color just for the heck of it now. Definitely don't need more black. You can see how concentrated that is in the center. I don't, I don't like having a, a super concentrated blob in the center like that, but we'll see. What happens with that as we go along? I think oh, started to put some mermaid in, but I'm going to do the purple twilight. Just get a couple of drops of that. One thing you gotta watch that I have done, and I just almost did it right there, that's what made me think about it, is you wanna keep your dryer super close to the paper, but you don't wanna touch it. You can, I've got ink all around the edges of mine where I have accidentally hit the paper. And sometimes it's not a problem, you can't even tell, but other times you'll have these interesting little marks on your paper. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this a little different than I usually do, I think. Let's see. Normally, I would go ahead and spread out that one before I do anything else, but I'm going to do this a little different right now.
And for anybody who's wondering, no, I have absolutely no reason for doing that that way. Uh, for stopping on that other one, other than that's just where my, uh, I don't know, gut <laughs> was telling me to go. So just leave that one be for a minute. And uh, work a little bit elsewhere for just a moment. kind of actually got that puddle a little bigger than I probably should have. So I'm trying to just get one drop here on these other ones. I'm trying to pick up just, you know, a little of the black and get it over into the purple a little just to give that shading in there because I think that's really cool looking. All right, come back around here and see what we can do with this. I will add that ink up at the top right there if it looks like, or I mean alcohol, I'm sorry. I'll add that alcohol if it looks like my ink is drying too much right there. And if it's a spot that I don't want to leave um, a, a solid line, I always try to go back and get it, especially before the rest of the alcohol dries. Makes it much easier to deal with that way. Debating. Sorry, turn that off. I'm used. To my, I leave my dryer on pretty much all the time when I'm doing a painting. Um, I'm debating on the mermaid. I really like it with the purple and the black, and uh, could do a little more blending in there and have it looking really good together. But I really did want some of that blue color in, or kind of aqua or teal. Sorry, I had to get a sip of coffee there. Let's see. Okay. Trying to be really careful just to get one drop of that in there because I do not want the blue to take over everything. Just want to make sure that I get it in there. guys can see this let me if you can see how this is kind of spotted up inside here that was my fault because I was not paying enough attention 
to this ink back here and it just sort of slowly dried up on its own while I was trying to deal with some of the other parts um, you know and it's it's not a big deal and you can leave it like that or you can put a little more alcohol on it since I'm not done working a lot of stuff in here that will probably disappear on its own shortly hmm definitely need some more blue somewhere else I think I'm kind of running out of room there I, you don't want to get super close to your edges if it's something you think is going to be framed because um, you know you'll just lose if you mat it or frame it depending on what size you use you're still you're going to lose some of the that strip of edge around there so i try to keep it back from the edge a little bit hmm actually i think i'm going to wait a minute i want to work on this because i want to blend that a little more with that the black and the purple and then we'll see where to go after that I'm trying to pick up some of that darker stuff in the center and pull it out here because um, that's you know there's three colors of paint mixed there now so I've got a whole new color on the paper that I can play with and I want to make sure that I get some of it out where it can be seen about those little fingers of ink before. I hate those things. I don't know, now I'm starting to kind of wish I'd just left it alone and not put the blue on there, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to try to push a little of this black back in before I put a little blue right here just so I don't get too much dark in there. Yes, I did that on purpose. <laughs> I wanted to pick up some of that. I wanted to push some of this super dark that's now the, the mermaid and the pitch black kind of mixed together. I wanted to pull some of that out to this other side.
I'm going to struggle over here where that ink is sort of beating up. It's not dry enough to use a paper towel on it yet. Eesh. That is awful. I'll show you guys this in just a second. What happens when it beads up? Let me see. Uh, sorry, the light is so bad that it's hard to... Alright, you guys see this? All the little spots in there? That's what happens when the water in your alcohol um, separates and uh, does its own thing. And now I'll probably end up over blending it trying to fix that because that's one of those things I, I just can't stand to leave alone. <laughs> Keep on blending that mermaid color in. Got a lot of ink going on there, or a lot of alcohol going on there right now. Makes it kind of a little bit harder to get stuff to go where you want it to go without just blowing a big mess everywhere. And there's some more of those darn little things. Something you gotta watch out for. You see that where I just was moving the hair dryer off to the side and hit some alcohol that was on there. humid today. I've not checked the weather. The, the higher the humidity is, the more you're going to see those little water beads on your painting. And using it on heat doesn't really help either. I still get them even if I do um, decide to go ahead and do something with the heat. Because that was my thought was, oh, okay, well, I'll just use um, heat and do one, and that will evaporate the water faster, too. But no, it doesn't really. Yeah, I really can't tell much of a difference. It's either going to do it or it's not, and there's not much you can do that I've discovered or, you know, I haven't heard of anybody else saying anything about knowing how to keep that from happening. It's starting to look like a big weird flower with that blob in the middle. I really don't like that. Really don't like that.
You see, I'm just trying to pick up some of this dark from the middle and spread it out a little. And I just don't like that. I got way too circular in there. I'm really not happy with it. I'm not <laughs> just blowing it right back into the middle again. my dark line running sort of through here and I'm not really sure I can even do that at this point. If you're like me and you tend to leave your dryer on quite a bit, um, you probably already figured this out, but make sure your dryer is well out of the way before you squirt alcohol on your paper. <laughs> because I have had some occasions where I have had little drops of alcohol go flying all across the painting. trying to get that that dark line a little thinner that you know, a little more like a line instead of just a big blob in the center of the painting and I think I'm going to go back and add some brass um, in where the dark line is some of the pinata brass color mm. I'm probably going to regret this, but I just don't like that. the whole thing right now. It's just a little lopsided looking. A little more than I want it to be. I 
I was, I was trying to shorten up some of the the whiskeys that come off on this side over here. Because I wanted to keep those a little closer to the center. Trying to work some of that into more of a line instead of a blob in the middle. Got it really wanting to do its own thing over here right now, but Sorry, I'm, I was thinking a minute. I think I'm gonna add some purple down here. Actually, I think I'm gonna blow this back towards the center a little bit and then uh, try and get some of the dark. Yeah, careful, don't scratch it with your finger now. Get some of the dark back towards the center and then put some purple on this side in here out to the corner more. I get to working, I'm not used to uh, <laughs> trying to keep up a commentary while I'm working and I get so focused on it that uh, a lot of times I just forget to talk. But there's not really much to tell you right now, just mostly trying to straighten out some of the composition, um, get a little happier with the color here and there and straighten out a little of the composition. 
But I do need to come back and do something with that. So I think I'll do that before I add the purple. Notice I'm trying to keep it pushing along that sort of center line that I've started building because I do want to keep it confined in there for the most part. what happens when your dryer gets in front of your face. I was so focused on one part, I didn't even see the ink shooting through there to another part. Yeah, well. Yeah, just leave that alone for now. I want that ink to come pretty far out, so I put my alcohol pretty far out. Man, look at that. Look at that. All those jaggedy edges. That's another sign that the humidity is kind of high for me most of the time. The water just does not like this, these surfaces, these non-porous surfaces, and uh, just wants to beat up on them. I have some 99% alcohol, and I probably should have gotten it out today. Um, you won't have quite as much trouble with the 99%, but... You will still see that same thing happen occasionally with it. Oh, yeah. And for anybody who is wondering, yes, the 99% is probably better to work. Actually, I know it's better to work with. Um, but I... Uh, had these bottles of 91% and I wanted to go ahead and use them up. I didn't want to waste them. So I've been trying to hoard back my 99. If you see that little bit of beating starting, sometimes you can kind of stop it from getting worse if you can get around the, the side where it's happening at, but not always.
about lost my line again. Yeah, you saw that, didn't you, where I dripped alcohol? I'm so bad for that. But that's all right. We will just go right back and do something about it. Or leave it, for that matter, if you want. I uh, heard somebody say one time that uh, they don't like to fix it, the little splatters or drops or whatever that might happen. Because that just lets people know that it is a handmade piece of art. Well, to me, it just lets me know that I wasn't careful enough while I was painting. So, you know, you guys can choose to look at it however you want to. I apologize for the length of this video. Um, I know it is probably getting to be quite long right now. I really have no idea what time I started or how long I've been going, so I apologize. I decided to pull a little of this out. I want to. I love that purple. But at right at this point, it doesn't blend with the rest of the painting very well. So I want to sort of gray that up just a little bit. some reason, all those little squigglies from the water like this side of the painting better than that one. I, I'm having a lot more trouble with this side with them. All right, just kind of looking to see, just looking to see what I can do to kind of balance some of this out. See, I love the way that this looks in here. I especially love that, the line and that and there. This I don't like. Don't know if you can see it. It's got the little jaggedy edges, but I don't want to keep adding color to it. And if I keep blending it, it's going to just end up um, gray. So I think I'm probably going to go ahead and add one more drop of blue in here. I'm going to add it up here on the, the darker part 
in the hopes that it will pick up some of that. Oh my goodness, did you guys see that? Look at that. Ooh, there you go. There's what happens when you uh, are watching an unedited video. All right, let's see what we can do with all that blue now. Mm, start there first. <laughs> trying to dissolve a little bit of that line where it, it pushed some ink up there and then dried while I was doing other things. I was trying to get that little line to dissolve in the alcohol a little bit. Trying to get a little more of the dark to come out right here now. And of course it's gonna do that. It's a lot of squiggly lines going.
Okay, you see, I'm trying to fill back in that kind of hole that I created there. A little bit too white, just standing out too much. <laughs> All right, well, I've thrown ink bottles and stuff around so much. Now I've got my lids mixed up. We'll figure it out later. All right. So I'm, I'm, you know, reasonably happy with that. I see some things that I'd like to um, be a little bit different, but if I start messing with it, too awfully much it's going to end up like these other ones that I've been struggling with lately um, I don't know I'm still I'm still debating on whether or not to uh, <coughs> um, do something about this it's so wide it's just kind of bothering me right now All right, so you probably noticed a little jump there in the way the painting was situated. Sorry, I had a, one of my granddaughters come in and needed something, had stopped for a little bit. Um, all right, so I was at, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do right here because this just doesn't fit in with the rest of it. So I think, I think I'm just gonna try adding another drop of the blue in down here and let it kind of blend with some of that gray. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want the blue there, if I want it over here, although I think I want it here. See, if I put the blue over here to where it comes out very far this way, that's gonna throw off the balance a little bit with down there, I think. So, I don't know, we'll try it and see. Like I said, I'm just trying to take a lighthearted approach to this one. and. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. Mercy me, I'm making a mess. So this ink, I swear, it's like a child. You take your eyes off of it for one second, look and see what's going on somewhere else, and there will be a problem. Like that. Is what I can start calling it when I just have to take a break from the ink because it's frustrating me too much. I'm just saying, I'm you know, putting my inks in time out for a while. Maybe I should put myself in time out. <laughs> I can learn to 
control my frustration level some more. Although I'm doing pretty good today. And I'm not thrilled with a lot of this, but, you know, that's okay today. I got my mind sort of in the right place before I started today, and that helps a lot. Try and get just a touch more of that pushed back towards the center right there to leave me a little bit of a, a design in there. Alright, I think I'm going to do oops, a little bit of the pinata brass on this one. And if I haven't told you guys before, I can't remember if I had or not, um, this is just straight pinata brass ink in here. I did not mix any alcohol in with it. Just uh, the brass that I have is in a, a big like four ounce bottle. And it doesn't have any kind of a, a small tip on it. So I just use one of my little, uh, these little tiny funnels here, which are great. These I ordered off of Amazon. I don't remember how much they were, um, but I'm, they're, re they're really easy to find if you need something like this. I just looked up, um, I think I looked up needle tip applicator bottles. Um, I think they're also um, used for quilling. So you, uh, Q-U-I-L-L-I-N-G, I think. Um, you could try looking it up with that, but just look up needle tip applicator bottles and these should show up. Um, they're really handy. Every once in a while, I will, um, this is some uh, of the eggplant that I had mixed with some alcohol to keep it, um, or to thin it down a little more before I put it on the paper. All right, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just thinking, trying to decide um, whether to put any ink down with this or not. Because if I, if I just keep it in the dark part in the center, um, I really don't need to put any ink down with it. You can just put the um, gold and a little bit of alcohol. And if you want it to really be super, super gold, um, just put it down by itself. Although it won't move much when you do that. So just keep that in mind that where you put it, it's mostly going to stay there. It won't kind of float like it does. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm dragging the video out here thinking. Actually, I think I will do purple under it. And that way, if I blow it and it gets off in here some, the alcohol that's with the metallic won't sort of push back the color into places that I don't want it quite so much. The, um, the ink helps fill that in a little bit. You just want one drop and hopefully one drop. Oh, there you go. Sometimes rather difficult to get just one drop to come out. You can see I'm kind of moving the paper there, too, just to keep it from um, going too far up. Oh, see those little water beads in there again. Um, if you're using a straw, be sure that you um, change it out 
just every few blows for a different straw because otherwise uh, the just the moisture from your breath builds up in it and you'll end up getting a big blob of water dripped in your painting somewhere. Um, I generally just keep two handy so I can swap one out after a few times to uh, make sure I don't get that. One of the things that I could do is, um, you know, take my little, oops, my little cut down makeup brush that I use as a liner brush, and um, you know, I can kind of come off of these here and there, but I actually don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I pretty much like that one the way it is. There's a shock. That's something you haven't heard from me much lately, <laughs> but so there you go. There's just um, my. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm knocking ink bottles over. Luckily, I had a roll of paper towels there, so it splattered on that instead of the, the disc. Um, and I have no idea what I was getting ready to say before that happened. Anyway, let me see if I can bring this up here a little. You can see that exactly where the uh, pinata brass is on it when I tilt it a little bit. You know, I've got some nice, really nice folds and lines in here, here and there. And while it's, you know, not one of my best ones, I'm pretty happy with it. I love the colors. This gray, uh, well, I used pitch black, but turned gray. Um, gray and purple and aqua together are just definitely one of my all-time favorite color combinations. So, well, once again, guys, I thank you all so much for watching, and I'm sorry that this video definitely ran long, um, you know, and, and please let me know in the comments if you would prefer that I do a voiceover with the video sped up a little bit, or if you like this type where you just have to sit there and watch every single detail of whatever I happen to be doing at the time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do it either way. So if you guys will just let me know, I will try and um, kind of plan the videos around what you all want. And once again, let me know if you have any questions, um, if there's a, something specific you'd like me to try and do just a, a short little tutorial on, um, let me know and I'll do what I can. See if it's anything that I'm able to do anyway. So thank you all once again for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the likes and the subscribers. Um, as the day that I am filming this, I was at 106 subscribers. So, you know, we're creeping up there and I love it. I'm, I'm just thrilled and slightly amazed that there are that many people out there that are willing to watch and subscribe to my videos considering what a just kind of rambling fool I sound like a lot of the time. <laughs> so, so thanks again, guys. I love you all. You guys are great, and I will see you soon.